Well, track meets, tournaments, concerts, proms, graduations, birthdays are all falling by the wayside. Communications professional and founder of Power Body Language, Lisa Mitchell, is here to help us learn how to talk about these missed milestones. Good morning. Good morning, Tracy. How are you? I'm, I'm doing well considering. Uh, my, my kids are doing okay with the e-learning so far, and I don't think it's really hit them that their track seasons likely aren't going to happen anyway. Well, they're not going to happen in any way, shape, or form. But there's a lot of different things that, again, are falling by the wayside and uh, different approaches to, to handle it and talk about it. Yeah, we're mourning the loss of a volleyball season here in my house, and um, that, that is definitely a loss, a very real loss for my daughter, and, and there's a lot of emotion around that, and a lot of like, well, what do I do with all the time that was taken up by this? And that's just one example of what people are missing out right now, and I think that the first thing that we need to do is just not ignore the facts that there is a sense of loss right now around some of these milestones, especially for graduating seniors right now who are you know, they're missing prom, they're missing the end of their sports season, they're missing, you know, walking for graduation. Um, just a, a lot of loss and to just act like it's business as usual is, is just a huge kind of disservice to the experience that they're having. And um, just taking a moment to be mindful of that and, and sit with them on that and, and really, you know, figure out how they're feeling is a, is a great way to just help them feel seen. Mm -hmm. um, and, and to have to be able to show some of that empathy right now is really important for the experience that people are having around the losses that they're experiencing. What do you think is the balance between um, not ignoring it and perhaps too much on the other side dwelling on what's not happening? Right. You don't want to create a catastrophe if someone's not experiencing that, right? So for me, the, the key for me is always asking the questions, right? Just asking a question, you know, is there anything that you're feeling really disappointed about right now? Or is there anything... You know, what are you missing most about our normal routine or, or what were you looking forward to that's not happening anymore? Because you don't want to solve a problem. Or you don't want to solve the wrong problem. Mm. Um, so asking a question about the experience, maybe they're maybe they're kind of just not missing a beat. And it's like, oh, well, so, you know, not to make that bigger than it is. So asking the question, how do you feel? You know, what are what are you missing? What are you most disappointed about right now? Let's you know how you can then help step in and, and solve that solve that problem or at least have a, a good targeted conversation with them about it. Well, and, and as many ways as there are for people to be processing the pandemic itself, there are that many ways even more that people are processing the missed experiences, right? Yeah, exactly. This is really an opportunity to get creative as a, as a family or as a, a core kind of quarantine unit or even still as a community or a school. It's, it's really acknowledging, finding creative ways. You can Google search or get on Pinterest or or watch TikTok or, or wherever you get your information for trends. And you can see people are, are going out of their way to decorate their doors of their homes for their seniors in a way that's really special to them. Or people are having drive-by graduation or drive-by birthday parties or, you know, keeping in mind the social distancing and what's safe for us. There's lots of ways, especially with technology, that you can still really help somebody feel seen and acknowledged and appreciated for or the milestones that they are still hitting, even if we can't celebrate in the normal way. Yeah, a former uh, television producer and a current friend of mine, his nephew is celebrating his 10th birthday over the weekend, and a party had been planned months ago. So instead, the, the uncle stepped up and got a whole bunch of uh, life-size, well, I guess life-size cardboard cutouts of superheroes and filled the party room that way. So I, I think it's really important, like you said, to be creative. One more, one more question for you. Yeah. What about... <laughs> the future of events since we're in this this area of uncertainty with with uh, stay in place things moving deadlines moving how far in the future do we look and have that discussion or do you is it just waited out yeah i think at this point it's just um plan on things not happening for a while at least through probably the fall and and start getting your creative hats on now ahead of time to figure out what can i order online or, or what can I organize, um, you know, through social media or, or how can I pull people together uh, it, from a safe distance or electronically to still make sure that we aren't being unprepared or, or caught by surprise and we're still giving these people really all the love and acknowledgement and warmth that they're looking for for the milestones that they, that they should and still are having. Ah, awesome. Uh, how's the e-learning going with your daughter? Um, we're just back at it today. Uh, mm. HSE cranks up e-learning. We have to build a Rube Goldberg machine. So <laughs> we've, been, we've been avoiding that for like three weeks now. So, oh, yeah. uh, so pray for us. <laughs> <laughs> you pray for us as well. Always appreciate your expertise and your perspective. PowerBodyLanguage.com. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks so much.